The default settings on the distortion filter uh, didn't really excite me too much. Uh, I wasn't too sure what the filter was for initially. Um, but then I just had a bit of a play around and I've actually come up with a number of different ways to use it. And one of them is a bit of a hand-drawn kind of look. And you can see that here, um, even if we just zoom in, it's a bit like the turbulence effect in After Effects. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was um, quite cool. And I just thought I'd share a few things that I've learned. Okay, I'm just going to start off with running through how I'd done this something similar previously. Um, I've just added some divisions and also some noise. Uh, if we open up our noise, we can just change these this around a little bit. So all I've done here is basically put the minimum at zero, maximum five, frequency five. So if you if I change this frequency and bring it right down, you can see that the animation's getting a lot smoother. So if we just increase that, it's a lot finer. So we can also add some divisions and you can see how the animation's getting a little finer there as well. 28 might be a little too much. So as you can see here, it's running at 25 frames per second. There's a couple of ways to tweak this. So one of them is just changing the playback step. And that way it's only playing every fifth frame. The other way of doing it is to adjust the time in our noise deformer. So I can just X out of here and use the round tool. Jump into round. Now we're going to add a frame. And this is how many frames we're stepping here, or rounding, I should say. Just go round and just round down. And you can see here that we've pretty much got the same, the same effect. This is just a simple scene to show you how the round node works. So I've just created it into the X position. And I've changed the rounding to 50. I'm just going to change this to down. And as we move through here, as you can see, nothing's changing. But then it'll hit to 50. And then it'll hit to 100. So every time it hits something that's divisible by 50, it's going to jump across. And that's essentially what I've used to round down the time. So that was one way of creating that kind of noisy effect. But the best way and the main way I'm going to show you now is with the distortion filter. So in this scene here, it's just a duplicator and we're just going to add some distortion. And as you can see, the initial one, not so usable. So we're just going to change the lens to direction. And we're also just going to drop this amplitude down to something, you know, something below five generally, just for this effect anyway. And we can click on the automatic padding here as well if we need it. You've got a little option up here called show preview and you can see what the noise is doing. So I'm just going to click on scale, hold alt and drag this down. Okay, so there's just a few parameters that I generally change in here. So I'm just going to bring that scale down to 0.1. And we can also just increase the frequency a bit. And I might just bring that alpha down as well. And the gain really adds just a bit more noise around the edges. So I'm just going to play with that a little bit and see how we go. So just dialing around and playing with these sliders here, you can really come up with some interesting interesting effects and some of them can be quite varied as well one thing that i've tried to play around with is using two of these so that i have two different kinds of distortions one of them is a very fine distortion and the other one's just a little bit larger just to add a bit more variation across the screen again i feel like i always say like you know just play around with the settings just have a bit of a tweak here and there um, and it's definitely true for this one. So in this one here, you can just see a bit more of that movement. Um, just playing around, just refining some of those settings. It's nothing too, nothing too crazy. 
and yeah i just feel like it adds a bit more of a bit more of a natural touch so as you can see there's the noise in the background as well um, i'll just open these up quickly and you can see what's going on um, so there's actually two lots of noise there's uh, the larger chunks and then there's a bit of a finer grain as well so this these are some of the settings i've got a joint time using the round trick as well and just bringing that one right down so this is the finer grain here so i've just scaled it down to 0.1 tweaks the frequency a bit there and i've changed the fractal mode to turbulent as well and this one i've increased the scale and change the gain a bit to just give it a bit more of a rougher edge and yeah again it's just a matter of just tweaking some of those settings and we'll see how we go so if i just change this minimum here you can see how that kind of brings in you can see some of those patterns that are coming through Yeah, and I, I don't know, it's it's just a nice and efficient effect. Um, I don't have to worry about uh, looping certain things or making sure my composition's not long enough. I'll clean this file up and upload it to Dropbox, and you can just have a bit of a mosey on through and uh, see what's happening. Cool, thanks for watching.